folks, we're going to be uh, Monday, June 3rd. This is a special voting meeting of the board. I believe we have one board member who will be joining us, possibly two who will be joining us virtually, both with voting privileges, uh, Katie Apker and Elder Harris. Uh, so folks may be able to see them online, or at least for folks who are uh, watching online as well, they would know that. Um, for the most part, this is a single uh, issue meeting with three different components. It is to uh, decide on a budget for a revote scheduled for June 18th. Um, and we will begin that process. We began it last week by having a meeting last Tuesday and talking about options. The board decided at that point in time, it would be good to take some time to hear feedback, to talk with folks. Um, which uh, I believe has taken place, and we are ready to go this evening. Um, I don't know if we're prepared for um, a short presentation or any of the documents. Um, if so, I would recommend that we do that just as both a refresher to our board members as well as the community members and proceed from there. And then the first part is a budget discussion. And then there are three different voting items, um, again, all connected to the single revote budget that we have. And so I see we have yeah, some we have, guests, and I'll yield to Dr. Brown. Thank you, Professor Bradwell. Uh, we do wish to do share some new information and then reiterate some information we've shared previously. Um, this first slide is new, um, and we will pro project it and give folks some time to read if they so choose as I share a couple of sound bites from it to try to summarize. But importantly um, and newly, there, we've uh, received a grant, a New York State Education Department grant for $800,000 to go towards a, a, the, um, the purchasing of electric buses. Um, with those funds, we feel we could uh, purchase EV buses at the same price uh, that we typically would purchase a gasoline-powered vehicle. So instead of reading to y'all, I think people can read it there, but this grant is new since the last time we were together. Um, these monies are going to be coming to us, and it's important for our voters to know that it's going to be available to us immediately. Anything else, team, that you would share about this particular grant? Just so that folks know, um, this is a rebate program, right? So EPA yeah. rounds one and three are rebate programs. EPA round two was a grant program. Um, EPA round one and two, although we applied for them, we did not receive those funds because those were selective communities specifically. And so Ithaca is wealthy enough not to qualify. EPA round three rebate program, we did qualify for, and we did receive up to uh, the funding for up to the four electric buses. That can happen over, a, I believe it's a two year time frame. So um, when we initially went forward with that proposition too, this was in the queue and this was going to be the, that rebate program that would defray those costs, right? To bring it down to le electric or to the gasoline level. Um, we can absolutely do less than that. And then that money can be used again next year. Because we receive these things, as Dr. Brown was saying, there are other grants that we then leverage as well. So there's a New York BIP, which is a bus incentive program that also, um, supports the charger costs. And so this really does almost equal to gasoline or even a little bit less because of the leveraging of those funds. And um, we do look forward to um, the facilities committee meeting. I think we're gonna be focusing on e-buses and have some of the, the team come and speak in a very timely manner about the funding and also some of the work that, that we've been doing. So thank you for um, allowing us the opportunity to, to apply for these wonderful grants. Sometimes they work and this is one of them. So this is really good news. Um, and it was announced, I believe, Thursday or Friday of last week. So this is this is hot off the press. Fantastic. And thanks to the folks who helped write the grant and participate. I know that that's a good yeah. deal of work. Many of us have been involved in that process before. And so we understand that. And I want to make sure that the community is clear. Um, it's an impressive amount. And it says that it can be used for up to four buses. And with the rest of the slide, I want to make sure the community is reading the rest of the slide that the proposition two that will be up on June 18th is asking for the purchase of two buses. And so while the grant says up to four buses, we are looking for two buses at this point in time. So it's good to know that there may be use in additional years should the board choose to go down that path. But I want to make sure there's clarity. Thank you. Good way to begin. And just as a reminder, that's 
uh, the voters authorizing will vote to authorize or not authorize through Prop 2 uh, for the school district to expend funds from the capital reserve. So it's money that already exists that then we would get rebates back on. Just again, helpful to say over and over. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other item you want to frame for the board? Just a reminder on the timeline, right? It's always good to repeat uh, sort of the the condensed um, schedule that we're on. Tonight is June 3rd. If you see June 4th is the deadline um, for the adoption. So thank you all for making yourselves available to do this. Um, upon uh, adoption of whatever uh, budget we go with, we will have materials ready to go um, in time for the mailer and the hearing. Um, and then also we've been receiving a lot of requests yep. for um, information sessions uh, in partnership with PTAs. Um, and so that's gonna be, uh, you know, we've done, a, we did a lot of those the last time, but we'll continue to do those. So that'll be a, a revisit to a lot of the PTAs. And again, during this next few weeks. Then to touch base on our priorities again, to reiterate, and by the way, for those of you who may be watching at home or maybe in the audience who don't know who I am, by the way, I'm Lily Talcott. I serve as the deputy superintendent and with me is Amanda Verba, our chief operations officer. So some key budget priorities that we are simply reflecting back to the community. So we heard this through that initial vote process um, that ultimately went down. And, you know, we heard how important it is to focus primarily on literacy and math, direct student support, decrease administration, utilize what we have in terms of facilities and defer some costs, uh, I'm sorry, defer some uh, purchases of equipment or and some maintenance, right? We also know that it's really important to pay our teachers and our educators more who work directly with students. So again, just a recap for the budget priorities. And then this is a slide. Again, each time we, we come together, we've eliminated that first column, right? That was a, a, a budget that we could consider at the CPI of 4.1. Um, what we did was bring it down to just two options here. The most important thing, and I think where the one point of confusion may be, is what is the starting point to compare these numbers to? And the starting point to compare these numbers to is not what we did in May. That is no longer a reality. That is That was voted down. The starting point is the year, the fiscal year 2024 that we are currently in that will end on June 30th. So when you see increases, those percentage increase and dollar amount increases, right? Um, you will see it compared to our current fiscal year. We have developed slides to be able to help the community understand what did we do to the May proposal mm -hmm. that was voted down to bring us to the re-vote or the contingency budget? But the starting point for comparison purposes is this fiscal year. So we're currently in a budget right now of $158,588,080 and with a levy amount of $107.7 That's the current year. The revote budget increases that budget amount by 2.79, which is well below the CPI. It also offers a levy amount that is less than the tax cap calculation levy amount that is allowed by law that requires a simple majority. The ca tax cap levy is about 111 million. This is just below that. Um, by uh, by a couple hundred thousand. As a note in italics, again, not the starting point, but just for folks' references, when we went out in May versus the revote budget, this revote budget took that May budget and reduced it by 5.9 million. On the other side, same reference, right? We take the current budget, 
If you increase it by 0.8, that is the legal contingency budget. Remember that the rules around a contingency budget, there are many, but two major points are, you cannot levy more than the prior year, thus the 107 million. And also you calculate a percentage of administrative costs and you cannot exceed that. Whatever the lesser of the two is, your current budget or the prior year budget. And then there are many other rules and we shared that the last meeting with you about the contingency budget, what that means for the school district. That would be a $9 million reduction from the May proposition that went out. That requires no vote, a board can adopt that. If the revote budget is adopted this evening and we take that to the voters in June, if that passes, that becomes our budget. If it fails, we go to a contingency. I'm gonna, gonna assume pause. that there's no questions from board members at this time, just to continue with the presentation until the end. Fantastic, just wanna make sure. Wonderful. I'm actually going to pause after this slide and we have many others if you'd like for us to reference them, but this will be our last one and then it will be much more interactive, mm -hmm. all right? We tried to capture essentially the key elements from our presentation last week to highlight for the community and for the board and for anyone watching now or later, here are some of the most important parts as we go out to this reboot. We're talking about a 163 million, $12,098 total budget. The tax rate we estimate at around $14.90 and 90 cents per $1,000 of $1,000 of assessed value. It is a 2.79% increase from this fiscal year. There's a 22% reduction in administrative labor costs. We will focus heavily on English language arts, mathematics, and inclusion. We will shift class sizes to pre-COVID levels. So those are some of the key elements, a, a one-stop shop overview of what we're talking about. And then we're happy to go into further detail, provide more information and support your discussion as you try to make a decision. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, board members, questions, comments, Aaron. <clears throat> Um, so I just want to clarify, it's a 2.79% increase because I've seen in multiple different places, 2.92 and 2.9. I don't remember where. I can, ex I can explain that difference, Erin. When we first came forward and we were looking at the numbers, you asked for three different scenarios as a board. You asked for a budget at the CPI, you asked for a budget at the tax cap, and you asked for a budget contingency. This is below the tax cap. That is why you see 2.79. The budget at the tax cap was 2.9. That's the that's the difference of those two. This is a, a, a budget that is less money than that. Thank you. And then my next question, well, my second question, my last question for now is more of a comment. Um, you know, in this slide show, contingency is put out there as an option. I know we haven't technically voted on it, but... I, I feel like we need to make it very clear as a board that a contingency budget would, our, our schools would be a shell of themselves. That is not a consideration. Uh, I'll say this for myself. I, I don't mean to speak for the whole board, but I don't feel this is a consideration in any way, knowing what it could do to our schools, knowing that there would be nothing after school, that sports and extracurriculars would be reduced. I mean, that is a terrifying prospect. And I just wanna make that clear. And so, you know, any questions that need to come our way ahead of this, please send them our way because the, 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 the under the tax cap budget is critical for our schools and our students and our, our, our children. Thanks, Erin. I'm sure there'll be some other board responses. I wanna just reiterate at any point in time, the board could adopt a contingency budget this evening and not go to a vote. 
I would dare say the whole purpose of going to a vote is to provide our community with a choice. The contingency budget is always an option. And thus the reason why we'd be putting forward a 2.79% budget increase for the community to let us know which they decide. Um, we will probably at some point in time ask you to remind us of some of the uh, limitations of a contingency budget, but let's hold on to that until that proper time for us to discuss that. Um, so I would agree, Aaron, I think that as a board, we're having a conversation about a 2.79 budget proposal and then decide if that's the one that we want to adopt or some iteration thereof, right? We are not locked into that number. We've asked our administrators and our team to put together a, a budget proposal. They've done that. And I remind folks um, as much as I can, this is the board of education budget, not the administration budget, right? We are the ones that decide what the budget is. And so um, we can begin from there, but other questions, comments, uh, Dr. Tripp. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot from people who are still concerned that there will be some teaching cuts, teachers or aides with this budget. And at the risk of, of setting off the old, we can't talk about personnel um, discussion, I'd like to hear the latest of your calculations on that as opposed to what we might see in the voice or the times or whatever. So um, we could start with um, the expected number of retirees and, and resignations, if you like, because that's what I've been talking with people about. The un I've been talking about the unlikelihood of significant teacher aid cuts. But um, if I've been wrong or there are more specifics, I'd like to see them. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jill. Thank you. So this is a slide we shared last week. And teacher aides and assistants are members of the Education Support Professionals of Ithaca, or ESPI, e -S -P -I, um, that second from the far right uh, unit. So you can see there's actually a proposed increase in the number of um, individuals who would hold those roles as teacher aides or teaching assistants, right? And that's really driven by IEPs. Thank you, Amanda, yep. We did update this slide last time. It simply said that the five-year average, so in that purple box that's up there, the five-year average of retirements and resignations in the Ithaca Teachers Association, so that's teachers, social workers, school psychologists, occupational therapists, um, <clears throat> the, the average over five years for both retirements and resignations is 58.2. You can see the delta between this year and proposed for next year is far less than that. Um, and and any, any shifts in relationship to that are really going to be around electives um, and increasing class size. Right? And when I say electives, I mean enrollment in electives needs to be at or above 17. Um, and in elementary, we're keeping class sizes at or around 17. There's some tricky sections, as you well know, Jill, um, where you know there may only be two sections in a given building. And so it's important to maintain, even though it's close to 17, uh, those two sections. Does that help at all? Yeah, I think that I think that covers the main issue very nicely. And and to repeat about the possible losing of some electives, what I understand that to mean is that if there are some electives, and they're all very appealing, by the way, um, that usually only get six or seven or eight students enrolled in them, because we have now we are now adopting um, a target of a minimum of 17 in a class, we would no longer be running or offering those electives. Therefore, we would not have the teachers for those. But perhaps we would find other places, other openings that might be for the, those teachers in the district. Okay, I think I've got it now. Thank yeah, you. I think I think another important point, which we've covered in human resources throughout the last several months, is we have a lot of educators who are teaching overages at the secondary level. 
because of vacancies that we hold now. So there's an element of potentially even reducing burnout and you know not asking people to do more, uh, certainly getting more compensation, but you know having having that free period open um, that that could be part of our future too. Can I add without trying to complicate this process, I'm just sort of thinking it through as someone who's been in schools and also working in this role for a number of, volunteering in this role for a number of years. Yeah. Um, my understanding is part of it would be sort of a hiring freeze, right? So that we would not fill positions that are empty. Not that we, not that anyone who's currently in a position would receive notice that your services are no longer needed. And, and humbly, I would dare say, and I don't want to get too complicated in this, while we have set a standard of 17, I imagine that there may be times where that may not be the case, that we still may have to run a class at 12 or 14, even though that may no longer be the goal or the expectation. I, I don't know if that's yeah. a fair assumption. We like to uh, call it not a hiring freeze, but a hiring chill. And so anything that goes outside of those parameters, we have a waiver process in place where folks will submit a proposal to me and the team. And we'll make decisions, both at the elementary and secondary level. So there is some flexibility. Understood. Yeah. I don't know if that additional context is helpful, not just for you, Joe, but for our community about understanding what may take place. I think that's good. It may be a little more fluid. Um, additional comments, questions that folks have. Well, thank you all for your continued work on, on this. Um, going back to the first slide with the, so this is the budget, um, proposition one, I want to use the same language that will be out there. Going back to the first slide that can possibly be proposition two, um, you had stated that Ithaca is wealthy enough not to qualify for some of the rebate. When you say wealthy enough, who defines that? Mm. So depending on the entity, right? This, the EPA, right? The, so um, the Environmental Protection Agency is the one that actually sets the standard for both their rebates and their grants, right? So rebates are round one and round three, and then round two is a grant program. So for this particular funding stream, it is the EPA. And then um, I think that they use, they they have um, other governmental entities at a federal level. These are these are federal grants, these are not state grants. So um, at a federal level of what to qualify. So think about like big cities, right? Um, um, levels of income um, in those areas, um, levels of services that are, really diminished or decreased due to the fact that they're very rural, right? Like, so think about communities that would get that priority. That's sort of how that, that goes first. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, this rebate program is a little bit more generous um, and, and sort of expanded those parameters. So that's why we'll, we'll always apply. If it seems like we, we can possibly fit, yeah. there are right now, I think two federal grants that um, one is like a, this clean schools program we would we wouldn't even be looked at. So to to try to to figure out you know submitting a grant for that would not be a good use of our bandwidth our um our time because we know we would not even be considered. We would just be put in the no pile. So it's it's good to note that we will always apply for grants and we're always in the process of applying for grants because at times um, the community might be misinformed thinking that we don't apply for aid and so forth. Right, and yeah. even if, if folks see grants that we're already applying for, we never are offended by redundancy, right? <laughs> Honestly, if if someone sees something that they think, you know, would, would um, help us get from A to B with, with grants or rebates or refunds or incentives that are out there, we will do that. I know that, um, Dr. Eversley Bradwell sent me an email. I think we got it almost through Let's Talk, but also an email. And so we're working on that list of essentially what's already in, in the queue, um, what, what that award would be, what we've already received. And so again, a lot of the grants that are out there right now are not just electrification of the fleet, but also sustainability measures in general. So think solar, right? Think um, 
um, decreasing your carbon footprint, those sorts of things, better construction um, in your buildings and methods and modes for that. So, so we will be going after a lot of those. And again, a lot of support is with the sustainability advocates that we have in our district and in our buildings that work with us very closely on that, as well as our um, architecture firm, our bus sales firms, um, our construction management firm, any, all of them are working together at the same time. Thank you. Katie, I know that you're here. I just want to make sure you have a chance to ask any questions that you may have as well. If, and I'm not, I am putting you on the spot, but not trying to. That's okay, Sean. If you can hear me, I am listening and do not have any. We are unable to hear you at this point in time, Katie. So I apologize. I didn't give our IT team some advance notice. Okay. What about now? Still can't hear you, Katie. Apologies. Maybe we'll come back if that works. Good call. Good call. In the meantime, any other questions, board members, comments? Let's see if Katie can speak here. Nope, not yet. She's typing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Okay. It's the null There's hypothesis. No I I have a comment. If this is a time for that, does anyone else have questions before I? I have a question about the contingency budget, but um, I don't know if that preempts your comment or not. So feel free. Gosh, I don't know either. I I'm just going to say um, what I said before the last budget vote, which is essentially. This is the budget we're presenting to the community. This is the community's opportunity to tell us what they think. We we think this is a good budget. It's not a perfect budget. It doesn't have everything that I wanted. and It has some things I didn't want, but we came, I believe we've come pretty much to consensus on this, and I will support this budget. I will also support Proposition 2 because I think not only is it the right thing to do, for us to be moving toward a more sustainable operation. But I'm very pleased with the with the way that we can get those buses now for essentially the same price as we would be paying for gas-powered buses that we will almost certainly need in the near future. So um, thank you for those who work so hard on this. I think we're headed in the right direction. And I expect that we'll continue in the direction that we've started on. So. I'll be voting yes. I hope you'll join me. You hope people participate. <laughs> Board members cannot encourage folks to vote yes or no against the budget. Um, I meant join me in the sense of beautiful. a picnic at Stuart Park or I'm, something. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm appreciative of that. Uh, we can say we can let people know what our personal uh, decisions may be. That's a matter of uh, individual board member approach, and I appreciate that. I do think before having a conversation or discussion to call a vote, um, it would be a good reminder for our, um, both board members and our community to consider what would be the implications of a contingency budget. What are some of the limitations? I think we see the numbers. We know it's being additional $3 million in, in um, reductions. Uh, that will come at an impact. But I think um, equally as important is the limitations that come along with contingency budgets. And so if there's a way we can speak to that briefly, I think that'd be helpful, at least for me. There you go. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, Lily, we were we were just you know determining how we wanted to do this. This is still this was presented at the last um, time that we were together, right? So um, that's nothing new. The contingency rates have not changed. Also, we did a little bit of analysis at the last meeting as well as the difference of revenue if we were to go to contingency. We we can jump to program impact, but I just wanted to make sure that the community knew that those were still part of the slide deck and that is there for them. And this slide deck will be made available to folks. It is it is on board docs. It's Perfect. it's pretty much on board docs almost immediately following the meeting because we have such incredibly talented members of the Ithaca City School District team who do that. And Mr. Burr, before we begin, for folks who may not be able to find it on board docs, I know it's not the most intuitive platform feel free to email the board clerk or any board member and we can send it to you as well, right? Because I know that some folks have had difficulty trying to access it, but 
and it does also, I think, go on the budget development website as well. So um, that that's also there. Another Great. location to not have to go through that portal. So to refresh, and we have updated some of the language just to make it extremely clear for our community and for the board. Anyone looking at it later. Uh, so we updated the language in the far left middle cell uh, because we keep getting questions about this. No usage of buildings and grounds free of charge by any outside group. So any staffing costs that are associated, preparation costs, cleaning. Utilities. Utilities, right? That includes, of course, electricity, heating and cooling, et cetera. All of those things would have to be passed on to those who use the facilities. Um, so, you know, of course, we've received a lot of questions about what does that mean for after school programs that are not affiliated with the school district. And I, I hope that clarifies. Um, so the key elements with a contingency budget from New York State. Uh, we are required to preserve, operate and maintain school buildings and mandated educational programs. It's a very basic element associated with a contingency budget. And we have to make sure that our staff and our students are safe. You all as a board get to determine what ordinary contingent expenses are. So there's a slight amount of judgment that you still get to exert. Um, but I think Aaron said it appropriately. It's a, it's a very different school district that you would see. Uh, there would be transportation reduction, so longer bus routes, additional increases to class sizes, which means shifting the offerings at secondary even further. There would be significant decreases in all extracurriculars. So that includes, and you know, so that's fine arts, that is athletics. Um, we wouldn't be able to purchase any student supplies or materials. There would be no equipment purchases, no new contracts may be negotiated or entered into. Um, and it is very important as part of the contingency budget through the New York State Education Department that the administration budget um, either be the same or less as a percentage of the previous year's budget. We would certainly fall within that, even with this budget that we're and I want to just add um, for definition purposes of the word contract. Thank you. Right. Because that came up also at the last meeting and we just want to have absolute clarity. And again, repetition for folks that um, weren't able to watch the last one. Contract and the language that Lily used was when we enter into things to support um, our school buildings, our staff, our students. Um, and it could be, for example, if, if we were to enter into a contract to go to visit a site like via a field trip, we could not do that, right? If it was to support a professional learning community and they wanted to bring in a speaker to support them or somebody to work through them, we could not do that. That would be considered a new contract. The word contract is often used also when we think about our bargained unit agreements, right? And that those actually by Taylor law, those stay in place. So if you made a commitment through a bargained agreement for a salary increase, those would not apply to that no new contracts, right? That is an agreement between the district, the board, and then um, the bargaining unit. Okay, so, so there's two, there's a nuance in that language we just wanna be really clear about. And Lily, I wanna make sure I heard you correctly that the proposed revote budget of 2.79% would already include reductions in administrative costs that would put us below what a contingency budget would be asking for. Is that Correct. what I heard? So a contingency budget would not necessarily further reduce the administrative costs because we're already doing that significantly, maybe not enough by some people's standards, but significantly by my standards. And my, it, and I just wanna make sure I'm here. We could, go, we could go deeper if we needed to. Understood. One one clarification. Remember that the contingency budget 
has three parts to it, just like our regular budget, right? It's required by law to break your budget into three different parts, administrative, which is not just um, the people that that oversee or manage others, right? A lot of times people think administrator, typically they think a manager of other people. Right, an administrative budget also includes other elements to Dr. Brown's point. It's not just people, but it's also services that serve the administration and functioning the operations of the district, right? This, the second part of the three tier budget is capital. Because of the columns on the right there, preserve, operate and maintain school buildings and mandated educational programs and ensure the health and safety of students and staff, the only, decreases to the capital area of the budget is the equipment purchases typically. That's what you see, that's by law, right? You can't purchase new things unless it's an emergency purpose, uh, but the, the people have to stay. We have to clean our buildings. We have to keep them clean. We have to meet those, right, those requirements. We have to mow our lawns. We have to do those things. We have to maintain our heat and our, uh, right, in, in our buildings. So that is important, maintainers, grounds, custodial. Mm -hmm. What does under a contingency budget with those two sort of bookends in the middle, the largest part is the program section. Mm -hmm. And that is where all of the instructional lines, everything that starts with that 200 in those function codes, that is what gets impacted in a contingency budget. Thank you for um, the refresher and the clarification of language about a contingency budget. Um, unless there are additional questions, I would ask that we go back to the slide that brings us to what a the proposed budget is in the contingency budget, um, leaving room for colleagues to ask additional questions. And uh, folks from the community should know that this is something that board members have been <laughs> Uh, I would say spending considerable amount of time over the past week exploring, asking questions, um, looking at information. So beyond last Tuesday's presentation, there's been a, a large number of hours to think about what is the best uh, option to put in front of the community. Um, I will uh, speak directly in relation to what uh, Dr. Jill Tripp said. Um, probably for different reasons, this is not the budget that I want. And this is a budget that I can wholeheartedly support. And in fact, we'll do as much advocacy as an individual uh, to make sure people understand um, the direction that we're headed and uh, the support that's necessary if we are gonna continue to put ourselves in a position to um, be an excellent school district. And so, um, I, I am greatly appreciative of the amount of work in such a short period of time that the various offices and have had to do. And so thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. And uh, I um, support a proposed revote budget as one individual board member. Additional comments, board members, questions? If hearing none, I would recommend that we continue on with our agenda, which would be bring us to a voting item of um, agenda item 2.2, which would be a resolution to adopt a budget that would be put forth on the June 18th revote date. And again, if uh, folks are ready, we can entertain motions. I'll move this. Resolved that the final budget for the Ithaca City School District for the fiscal year of 2024-2025 be hereby adopted by the Board of Education in the amount of $163,012,098. Second. Moved by Jill, second by Adam. Discussion, questions, debate. Yes, Garrett, please. I'm just, I'm just looking at the, the, the agenda. Proposition two would fall where, under which? We already decided on Proposition two so at the last board meeting. It's already been part of the legal notice that okay. is already set. So then, forgive me, then that, that leads to the question I was going to just confuse my order. Yep. Was the information on the EPA grant, is there any way for that? No. One more time, Garrick, I didn't hear the question. Well, we have some change in the cost of those buses since Proposition two. Uh, it seems like there's no way to, to update the text. You cannot, yes. Yeah. So once the legal notice, once that language has been adopted, and again, we've 
this is this is the realities of the timing of things, right? We can't you can't force things to come sooner. You cannot modify the legal language, but we can through communications get information out specifically on that first slide that we added the slide deck. Um, and you can have information at polling sites to be able to have people understand what it is that they're they're voting for if something has changed with mental health. Not to influence, but to educate. Yep. Does that answer your question, Gary? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was just trying to understand the procedural, but I, I realize that's not the question before us, but yeah, let, let's do that. Right. And, the, and, and we're also updating the frequently asked questions to reflect that too. Abs yeah. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. So the motion on the table that was moved by Jill and seconded by Adam is only regarding proposition one. Proposition two, we already decided at our last board meeting and the legal notice has gone out. What we are doing here this evening is setting the number that will go into proposition one and will be a part of the second legal notice, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And that number is the not to exceed, yes, right? So remember exceed. that includes your tax levy. It includes your state aid as this is all revenue, right? Your tax levy, your state aid, your other miscellaneous revenue and the fund balance that is allocated to balance that budget right. so that it's not to exceed that amount. Thank you. Additional questions, board members? Hearing none, then I'll call the question. All in favor? Trisha, you have that? That is unanimous. We're missing one board member this evening. Thank you, board members, very much. That brings us to agenda item 2.3 which is a adoption of the property tax report card. And we will entertain motions. I'll be happy to read this as well. <sighs> Where is the Board of Education of the City School District of the City of Ithaca, New York, Tompkins County desires to adopt the property tax report card to accompany the annual school district budget for the fiscal year 24, 2024, 2025, and whereas the property tax report card required by sections 1608, parentheses 7, 1716, parentheses 7, and 2601 A, parentheses 3 of the education law is as follows Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the City School District of the City of Ithaca, New York, agrees to adopt the property tax report card to accompany the annual school district budget for the fiscal year 2024-2025. I second. Moved by Jill, seconded by Karen. Questions, debate, conversation? Hearing none, we will call the question. All in favor of the motion? That is unanimous. And we have Mr. Harris who has joined us. And then that brings us to agenda item 2.4, a resolution for appointing election officials. And we will entertain motions. Motion to approve the appointment of election officials for the June 18th, 2024 budget revote. Second. Moved by Jill, second by Adam. Discussion, debate, conversation. Well, just a discussion, um, part of the discussion that is listed here, um, the different schools or different locations where the budget vote is happening, as with school boards, how they're different from general election. We have everything on the website, and the time differs from general election. Everything is on the website. I've heard some negative comments before, and I just want to stress everything has always been on our website and continues, and it's always been the same every year, 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Additional discussion, conversation? We will call the question all in favor. That is unanimous once again. Um, so we are set with a budget revote on June 18th, 2024. Folks should make note that the board will not approve the election results until June 20th, which would allow for the federal holiday of June 19th. And so we will not be meeting on June 19th for Juneteenth. 
as a federal holiday, but we will be meeting on June 20th to, for lack, I, I was incorrect when I said certify the results. So I want to make sure I use the exact language that I was told to use, which is to approve the results that have come our way. Um, with that being said, we have one last agenda item, um, which is the possibility of going into executive session if the board moves so. I would say if we, well, let me entertain motions first. I'll move because I think I'm the best reader here. Well, that's, good, that's a challenge, Moira. <laughs> Recommended action motion to enter the executive session for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular individual. Second. Moved by Jill, second by Adam. Discussion, debate, conversation. All in favor? I don't know if that is unanimous. That is unanimous as well. And to um, our people who are watching at home and folks here in the audience, the board anticipates being into executive session to come back from executive session, but the work of the board is done for the evening. And so we'll come back simply to close the meeting. And so we have no clue how long we'll be in executive session but there will be no additional votes for this evening as I understand them. So we thank you. We thank you for watching and for engaging and we look forward to the continued conversations over the next two weeks for the budget vote. So thank you all very much. We'll enter into exec session now. Bob.